Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talladega Super Speedway for our 12th race of the season. And boy, oh boy, we're going old school, all right. For the first time ever in Intercell history, we are running a themed race at Talladega. A brand new feature there. We are running for the Cup Series whenever we head to Talladega Super Speedway. The drivers throw back to a certain year, and they choose the schemes whenever as they please. Some have gotten their regular choice. They didn't have to worry about painting like you see our pole setter here, Brett Pritchard. Some have chosen different schemes that went full out 2001. And then there's even some drivers that went completely full out 2001 by being in their respective number and going into that ride. We'll show more about it as we're going to go green. So let's get on down to your starting lineup. On the pole, we have Brett Pritchard in the Dale Earnhardt Jr. colors. So he will be in the Budweiser shootout next season. Next to him, Jeffrey Fingai, who will be in the number 92. Throwing it back to Jimmy Spencer's 26 Kmart forward. Uh, third is Jessica Shelton. We're actually going to go to this here, so that way you guys can see all the cars here. She is running the Bill Elliott colors. But if you notice, there's a twist. She's got Mountain Dew Spiked as her main sponsor. So cool to see that right there. Fourth. Eric Burton throwing it back to Tony Stewart's 2001 Home Depot car. Uh, fifth is Kate Anderson. She has moved over from the 3 to the 29 for this race. And, of course, running the newer Chevy that's being out there. So a nice work by Kyle Keith on the scheme there. Uh, six, Alex Drain throwing it back to... Uh, my memory serves me correctly. Mike Wallace. Yep, that's who it was. Seventh is Michael Wallen running the Miller Lite Ford. The throwback to Rusty Wallace. The other Wallace car. Eighth, Nathan Hudson, who's throwing it back to Johnny Benson's number 10 Vaveline car. Very nice. I think this was probably the one of the better throwback cars that was painted. Uh, ninth is Connor Meyer. And I am having a huge memory for it and who it is. If it hits me, I will remember. And then completing the top 10, Zach Rogers. He is one of the few people that do not have throwbacks for this race. And here's the rest of your starting lineup. you got Kyle Matthews to Terry Labonte. Johnny Gardner, Jerry Mayfield, Scott Roush to Bobby Labonte, Zachary Fitzwater does not have a throwback in mind, Kev Shearer to Jason Leffler, Charles Sanford to Brett Bodine, Daniel Olson to um, Elliot Sadler, JT Bryant to Ricky Craven, Trent Dunn to Steve Park, RJ or Ron Bishop to um, uh, Ward Burton as here comes the command to fire the engines. As there's the command, and if I have a memory fart by any means, I'm I apologize deeply. So please do not get upset. James Qualls doing Casey Atwood, um, R.J. Bishop with uh, Dale Earnhardt, Sky Commons with Matt Kenseth, Dylan Pote with the 31 of Mike Skinner, Kyle Keith running Sterling Marlins Target, Cat Batson running Ricky Rudd. And real quick, that uh, Connor Meyer has Derek Cope that was on there. Quentin Moore running Quentin, uh, uh, Morgan Shepard. Emma Ross running the Dave Blaney colors. Or, I'm, I'm sorry, Robert Presley. My apologies. Uh, Benjamin Miles uh, does not have a throwback. Anthony McCurry does not have a throwback. Audrey Baranowskis does not have a throwback. Uh, the 15 of Phil Parker's running the 27 of Mike Wallace, but in Geico Direct. Uh, Cody Lamas running the Lowe's. 48, that's the Jimmy Johnson colors there. Seth Cole running the Oakwood Homes, Joe Nemechek colors. Joshua Osborne does not have a throwback as we're about ready to get the green flag here. Um, Clint Spillman running the Jeff Gordon Pepsi colors as green flag is underway. Levi McIntyre running the Sicko Ford of Jeff Burton. John Art run, moving over from the 90, or um, I'm sorry, the 05 to the 93. Running the Dave Blaney colors. Zach Flickinger running the 96 Exalta Brant. Throwing it back to Andy Houston. Josh Piscoli throwing it back to the Tropicana car. That is Shauna Robinson's car into that 54. And last but not least, Keith Batson running the throwback to Dale Jarrett. All right. Got that out of the way. Now, if you've noticed, too, we're running 38 laps for this race instead of the 29 that was ran in the Xfinity. So an extra... Nine laps to decide the race that will be taking play here. Brett Pritchard off to a great start. He has not been having any luck whatsoever, and I know we did not talk about points, but I do want to mention as well as coming to the line, looks like Michael Walt led that lap. He barely did. 
Wow, he barely did for sure. Uh, these drivers are trying to get last chance effort to get a win to get to the all-star race. Now, I know there's plenty of drivers like the rookies and a few veterans that are trying to get up there. that are trying to represent. I know you got drivers like Joshua Osborne who's trying to get in there. And he's not been having a good season despite winning three races. However, they were before last season's all-star race. So he's trying to get in there very desperately. And also, don't forget, you got drivers that are trying to work their way into the top 10 in points that could get in there as well. And also, try to get into the battle for that championship. A win could also mean anything, too. Coming to the line, though, battle of the Fords at the line. Daniel Olsen will lead that lap. As a couple cars scraping the wall. By the way, Ron Bishop, yep, as mentioned, it was the 22 Ward Burton. I wanted to confirm that there. I was having a little bit of a, of a brain fart there. And... Couple cars, uh. Oh, it's Dylan Pozzi that blew the motor, the low Chevrolet. Problems for the Mike Skinner colors, and that separated a few cars in the pack. On lap three of 38, Dylan Pozzi, the season five champion, is going to go up and smoke. That's going to allow John Art, Clint Spillman to work together, as too with Joshua Sicoli. I believe Osborne and Ferranti, they're going to try to get into that back of the pack. I don't know if they're gonna. They're gonna try though, but I know Sicoli, Spillman, and Art. That's definitely not what they needed. I don't know about these two. They're trying though. I think they're gonna make it. JT Bryant, I believe I did say it. He's throwing it back to Ricky Craven's colors. And Ferranti and Osborne will be good to go. Dylan Pozzi will come on now, Pit Road. There's something you probably would not see every day the Morgan Shepard car out in front. Very interesting to see that. I know uh, many of the people who painted, they made some interesting choices. Quit Moore making a Morgan Shepard car, the unsponsored car. That was painted by Johnny Gardner. Then you got a couple of drivers that don't have throwbacks. You got like Anthony McCurry in the 61. Uh, looking through here, I see Audrey Baranowskis in the 46. There's at the line. Wow, Cody Lamas barely edged out McCurry. He will lead that lap as they're going to be four wide for the lead. Curry in a bad scenario, and he's trying to shut the door on Quint Moore to not be in that four-wide scenario, and tucks back in line. Smart driving by the veteran right there. Keep in mind, too, this is McCurry's first full season in a Chevrolet. He had been an Audi since season two from there till season six, and now Chevy has been on board with this season. Here comes the Dodge. R.J. Bishop, now the Chevy is Seth Cole. Look at all the different manufacturers. You got Dodge, Chevy, Toyota, all right there. Still three wide, nose to tail there throughout this pack. And at the line, R.J. Bishop will lead them down. Now, Seth Cole, last time we were at Talladega, this was the Chase LCQ race uh, after Thornton, and had a bit of controversy come along his way. He ended up turning Devin Becker. He was in the top two, then another quick caution came out. He managed to get the spot. And, I mean, it was a very interesting uh, moment in time for these drivers. So, I guarantee you, odds are definitely going to be stacked against the 33 team for sure. Now, as far as how he's doing the stings, that's to be determined. But, we'll see what will happen, though. And, again, we'll take a look at the points when we go under the caution and uh, get back to green flag racing. So... We'll see what happens. Kyle Keith in that target Chevrolet, the Marlin Colors. He's going to lead that lap. You can see that Coors Light on the sides of the car and on the rear. He did have that scheme for a portion of 2001, I believe, for a race or two. And for a bit, we were four wide again. Now we're back to three wide. And I know these drivers, they're playing really smart. They're not wanting to force the issue, go four wide right off the bat and cause a wreck. They're... Not trying to be super aggressive, but they know they want to get up to the front and lead a lap so that we can get some bonus points there. Here comes Baranowskis. Trying to be the first non-throwback car to lead the lap. In that Menards Toyota. Now Phil Parker. Keith Batson. Working together. Ember Ross almost got shoved out of line right there in that 77. And Parker. And that 15 car is going to lead a lap. Now here comes the KAB car. Keith Batson, if you notice the 39, the 58, they are running both the 
the Dale Jarrett uh, 88 UPS forward, but with his own sponsor, uh, Vettix. And Cap Batson, which was painted by Kyle Keith, is running the full out Ricky Rudd colors. You see kind of in the rear of the field in that black and red car there. Kind of funny how they ran their how they ran the team of of now that I can't think about it, which is killing me here. Oh man, the time I need to remember it. I'm having a brain fart, but in the meantime, while I get the name right, I know someone's screaming in the comments. Ferranti will lead that lap. That's the first non-throwback car that's gonna lead a lap in this race. Four wide up in the front. That's that's the Andy Houston colors of Zach Flickinger again. Kind of not really wanting to be where he's at. Now, here's the thing about Flickinger. He's won both the Xfinity race and the Cup race this season of, like, where he needed to win. Now he's got to make sure he makes the chase. But, oh, that's a little sketchy. Wow, and he almost got into Phil Parker, but he's going to keep it together. Close call. But, man, they nearly dodged a bullet right there. Now, Bryant trying not to get Keith Batts underneath him, and they're still four wide. That's where Sky Comet's is set in the 17. He's trying to get back in line, and will do so. Now, look at this. Hudson, Burton, Shelton at the line. Oh, close battle right there, but Hudson will lead the lap. Jessica Shelton, keep in mind, is the points leader. That's what I do remember. Still three wide. Now you're seeing a bit of four wide kind of form, and now they're back to three. And Benjamin Miles, the other non-throwback car, going to go to the point. You kind of see those three cars that were just kind of off the pace. You know, they're going only 197. Look, they're still kind of together, but they're still really far back. Four wide in the rear of the field. Now they're suddenly back out to three. These, these drivers, they know they don't want to really make a mistake this early on. Miles, though, out in front. And I now I've realized it's hit me. It's um, uh, Yates Racing. I apologize. I couldn't think of it right off the bat. It's just a bad memory fart at the worst time. It happens when you get old. So, so far, we are 11 laps of green flag racing. John Art, Clint Spillman, Joshua Scully, the only ones off the pace because of Dylan Poteet's blow-up. And keep in mind, that 31 car is the only retiree, a gearbox issue. Connor Meyer now going to try to lead them down for Meyer Racing. Coming to the line, will lead that lap. Keep in mind, Connor Meyer is your previous race winner in Chicagoland. And nine times out of ten, the driver who won the previous race normally does not do well. So hopefully that'll change. Kyle Matthews, though, going to come to the point. Now James Qualls. Working his way up to the front. Now, Qualls has been very consistent this season. The Cup Series, just like last season, that's what's been to his success. But you know Qualls, he wants to break that winless streak. But not today. Daniel Olsen working his way back up to the front. The Elliott Sadler colors. Hopefully, he does not flip over. But the good news is this is before the year's Sadler flipped. Because remember, he flipped in 2000. Elliott Sadler flipped his cars in 2003 in this exact race. So... Thank God it's 2001. And look at Flickinger. He forced the two car up the course a bit. And we're going to go four wide. Benjamin Miles scraping the wall right there. And now they're four wide, two rows deep. This is not good for this pack. Anderson and Parker in a bad scenario. Michael Wall going to hit the gas and not let the 96 on by. However, you're seeing mid pack. This is not good right there. Parker really. Making the issue on Kate Anderson right there. Still four wide coming into turn three. Barker, I can guarantee you that rookie is holding on to his breath right there. Oh, there goes McCurry. Zach Flickinger around. Kyle Matthews. The big one's going to strike. Comments. Oh, my goodness. Benjamin Miles airborne. Flipping over. Spillman Arden. Sicoli trying to scatter. I believe all three of them did. Miles on his roof as Johnny Gardner led them down, coming to the yellow. Roush stuck on the apron. Osborne involved, Jessica Shelton, Zach Flickinger. That was one of the first cars I seen go around. Kate Anderson 
Her season has been a nightmare. The points leader, though, Jessica Shelton, involved, and that is not good for S3 Motorsports, the 0-2 machine. Connor Meyer got a piece. Alex Ferranti. I think Charles Sanford may have got a piece. Oh, look out. They're stacking up. Or at least trying to hit the brakes. Oh, no. They're plowing into each other. Spillman involved. Jeffrey Fingai, they're scattering. I think because someone got spun is what we're hearing. Oh, and Anderson got to Shelton. Oh, Clint Spillman, who was in the rear of the field at the time. John Art, the same with him. Where is Sicoli? Where's the 54? There he is. He looks like he's all good. Yes, he is. And drivers coming down pit road. This is our one and only stop. Guys, slow down. It's just coming down pit road. You see pit lane two. Or take the ticker off. Sicoli is probably the only one who got lucky after all that. Everyone else. Not really. And pit lane one, we shall go. We see a little bit of dust kicked up on the uh, exit of, or uh, entrance of pit road. Excuse me. Johnny Gardner, Kev Shear, Brett Pritchard into their stalls. Going to keep an eye on Johnny Gardner to see if he's going to be the first one out. Indeed the case. No, Brett Pritchard going to be the first one out. Oh, and a little bit of calamity on pit road there. Oh, and look out. Ember Ross nearly got into Clint Spillman. That was a close call because I believe that's Kyle Keith in the 40. Either that or Shelton. One of the two. Yeah, that was Kyle Keith. He just about got the 77 into the 24. Close call. Some drivers may be lucky. Others may not. Roush still on pit road. He's going to be a lap down. Caution's out. Brett Pritchard out in front. Let's go take a look what, what happened to Dylan Posey exactly. And then we will take a look as, oh my... Actually, hold on a second before we do, because everyone's trying to figure out where they are online. Now they're really confused here. Guys, slow down. There's a there's a brake pedal, you know, to the left, you know. Just making sure everyone's going to be okay here. I believe mainly for Cat Batson is where she's trying to get up there is causing a confusion. But at least this time, everyone's using the brakes and not trying to plow into one another. Phil Parker, Cody Lamas, wisely not trying to hit the gas. Brett Pritchard now confirmed out in front. Let's go take a look what happened to Dylan Pozzi and then take a look at her first caution. Well, here we are with Dylan Pozzi. We're going to try to see if we get a, good, a really good view. There he is. You see right there in the back straight, he blew the motor. as about ready to hit the front straight in the low Chevrolet. Right in the middle of the pack, just blows up. And a tough break for Sicoli, uh, Spillman, and Art. They were all trying to avoid the 31. And they had to check up because of it really, really badly. You see the Chop Cannon Toyota, the Pepsi Chevrolet, and the Zaxby's Amco Chev uh, Chevrolet there. All had to check up. And because of that, they lost ground on that pack really, really badly. Sicoli really didn't have a bad effect. It was Clint Spillman and John Art that really took the worst end of it. So that's what brought uh, Dylan Posey's night, or a day rather, to an early end. Now let's go take a look what brought the caution with McCurry and others. Well, here's a look at what happened to Dylan Posey. Knows. We're just going to go for right now to the helicopter camera angle here because there's just so much that happened. Now you see him and Parker were making a lot of contact. That's what's going to cause the accident. You see those three getting involved, and it looked like they were going to keep it together at first, but then once you see the 96 go around, Enders officials, they had no choice, throw out the yellow. Lucky break for Alex Drain and James Qualls. They nearly dodged a bullet. There you see Kyle Matthews get a piece. There's Connor Meyer. Zach Rogers, I believe that white guy was Charles Sanford. Andre Baranowskis, nowhere to go. Scott Roush, Cody Lamas. There you see Sky Comets whacking the wall there. Kyle Keefe just absolutely having no luck whatsoever. Runs into Phil Parker. Keith Batson gets in a little bit of Joshua Osborne there as he's spinning. Actually, look at Batson go through the grass. He actually, I think, avoids it. He does. There's Roush. 
We'll have to look at Benjamin Miles in a second. He took a wild ride. Oh, there's Jessica Sheldon. I believe she ran to Anderson and Ferranti. There you see those three. Look at Spellman just ride through the grass to avoid it all. They make up some ground. Now let's find the 43 because, oh my, yeah, he took a wild ride here. Oh my goodness. I, I think he may have hit the kink. Let's see if we get a view from the spectator camera angle here. I, I think that's what happened because I've never seen this happen before at Talladega. It's very rare. I've seen it once happen in the testing, but it's never happened in the race. Now keep in mind the farmer, John Chevrolet. Wrecking all around. That's Connor Meyer, Kate Anderson in the front. There's Charles Sanford. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what happened. He he hit the cake and flew over Shelton and Alex Ferranti. Oh, my goodness. I'm amazed none of, no one got involved in that, but... Wow, that was a separate wreck by itself. Oh, my goodness. That is a unfortunate turn of events right there for the 43 team. Wow, and they were just about going full speed, too. Let's see if we can find the speed. Now, see, he's checking up because he's going about 150. He's hitting the gas a bit, slowing down. Yeah, if it wasn't for Charles Sanford, he just gets a piece of it. And thank God the speed was going light. He hit it about 133 miles per hour, and that is unfortunate right there. You can see he just right here... Right in that area, right to the the right side of his car, you can see where that piece of the safer barrier is sticking out, and unfortunately he hits that. That is just unfortunate circumstances for that 43 team. I apologize, my mouse is kind of messing me up here, but you can see just right here he hit that, and then return, play full mo. Well. Unfortunate right there. Caution's out. Let's take you back to the green. Welcome back. You've not missed much as they just took the green flag. We'll mention our top 10 right now. They include Brett Pritchard, Johnny Gardner, Trent Dunham, Cap Batson, Kev Shear, Michael Walton, Daniel Olsen, Levi McIntyre, Alex Drayton, and Quentin Moore. That completes your top 10. They're fortunately going to have to deal with Scott Roush right now. who's being a nuisance. Out of the race after that. Include the following of Benjamin Miles. We have gotten word he's okay. Joshua Osborne, Kate Anderson, Alex Ferranti, Zach Rogers, and Jeffrey Fingai. As already mentioned, too, Scott Roush has lapped down in 35th for 34 cars on the lead lap, 35 on the track. Well, Scott Roush already causing some issues for some drivers. Baranowskis has got some damage her herself to deal with. RJ Bishop should be okay. Same for Charles Sanford. I'm not sure. These guys are... Really losing ground, including Clint Spillman, Connor Meyer, Zach Flickinger, Phil Parker. Yeah, some of those guys really took some impact because of the, the stack up. And I do not know how that happened. Because these guys were just coming in way too hot. I don't know, the pace car, they really just passed them. And they just weren't able to. And I thought they were going to slow down enough, but not the case. And we are at the halfway point right now, too, keep in mind. So I believe that was our only pit stop of the race. Now Scott Roush holding up some drivers there like Ember Ross in the 77, Ron Bishop in the 88. Both the Bishop family racing cars just having to deal with some damage and the 18 there. That's going to allow Zachary Fitzwater, Keith Batson, Kyle Keith, Sky Comets, and possibly Kyle Matthews to work together to be in this pack. I'm not sure, but... They're going to try, though. Either that or form a second pack. And those guys, it's safe to say, they're probably S-O-L. Flickinger, Meyer, Spillman, Parker, Arndt, Lamas, and, and Bryant all involved. However, for right now, this is the main pack. It's being led by Gardner, McIntyre, Cole, Drayton, Sicoli. Give him some credit. He was in the rear of the field. Got through everything. Drayton, Olsen, Walton, Dunham, Pritchard, Moore, Batson, Shear. And that is it. Now, these guys are trying to work together. 
If I were them, I would just stay single file, but they are not doing so. They're just making a small pack and a big pack together. Somehow, Audra Baranowskis, with her damage, is still maintaining her pace. I don't know how, but she is. As you can see on that Menards Toyota, there is a good buckle on that hood, and she's still going. Matthews just barely hanging into the pack. Same for Keith Batts, and you can see how both of those drivers, with the damage they even sustained, primarily Kyle Matthews, which I believe he's got a buckle on his hood too. Indeed the case. Somehow, he's trying to get up there. Ember Ross, though, losing ground on that lead pack. You can tell she wants to get up there. But it's having no luck. And Scott Roush held up a little too much on that pack right there. And I don't know if they're going to be able to get up there, though. Now, these guys are not as slow as the 18, but they'll catch them and won't be good. Back to the front, though. Three wide, four wide for second. You look at who is in here with the teams. Got the single car team of Sheer Trigger Incorporated. Got Sekeet Motorsports with Dunham and Pritchard. And that is it. You got Johanna Atwood Motorsports with James Qualls. Got Tweenix with Seth Cole. All three of Gardner Racing's cars are in the pack. Gardner, Moore, and Olsen. Got the only Meyer Racing car in the pack of Joshua Sicoli as Parker and Meyer off the pace. The single car team of uh, Jamba Racing. The single, car, the single car team of, of Thrash Maniac Racing. Of Levi McIntyre. And the sing and the and the one of the two cars of Michael Walton Racing that's up here. Other than that, they are either in that second pack, which has definitely lost the draft, or are off the pace or out of the race. One of those are happening. But unbelievable how all three Gardner racing cars are up here. Primarily a lot of Fords are up here, and here comes another Ford going for the lead. And looking through, I believe, yes indeed. Joshua Sicoli is the only Toyota in this pack. So if you're drivers that are not Ford, what do you do at this point? Do you work together to beat the Fords? Or do you try to make it as every man or woman for yourself and try to get up there? Battle for this win. Well, I just realized there are no females up in this main pack unless you want to count Sicoli's ride from a female racing sponsor and all, but man, that second pack, they are just losing more ground. 48, 832 was the last lap. They ran a 48, 780. Yeah, they're, they're nowhere up there. You can tell this is the main pack. They're getting the speed. Let's just see the margin. When we get to the line, last time it was 438, but between, uh, that in there, which is probably about at least four seconds between uh, the leaders and that group of cars. 458, two tenths. However, the 17 was uh, .12 behind the 77. So that is not looking good for them. So it looks like these cars are going to be the ones battling out for the win. Possibly JT Bryant may be a factor. Because he is really slow. And they may catch up to Cody Lamas and John Art. Scott Roush being reeled in by Flickinger, Parker, Meyer, and Spillman. Matthews, Batson, and, and Fitzwater are lost the pack. These guys have realized they got to work together if they're going to get up there. And they're now going single file. However, they are losing more of that pack left and right. They are hoping and praying that they catch that 22 car. That's the only way they can get up there to battle for this win and hope that 22 really holds them up. 
Like, I mean, they got to get them off the turn and make sure that they really gain as much ground as possible without getting held up in the process. For these drivers, they're hoping the 22 doesn't hold them up, which is doubtful. Because knowing how these drivers are and the way how they're set up, I highly doubt that. <laughs> Anyways, the Fords are three wide coming to the line. McIntyre leads them. Keep in mind, too, when we had our first ever throwback race, which was over at Atlanta the very first season, Levi McIntyre won that race. Kev Shear was the second to ever do so. I, I, actually, let me think that. No, McIntyre was the second to win it. Kev Shear was the first to win it. Actually, no. No, it, it was uh, McIntyre, then Kev Shear, and then it was Joshua Osborne. Those were all in Atlanta. Obviously, McIntyre and Shear in this pack, Osborne is not. He's out of the race. And they are catching very, very slightly on that 22 as we are less than 10 laps to go. Seth Cole out in front. Johnny Garner in second. Caution would really change everything here. Yeah, they're going to catch Bryant. There's no way they're not going to. Look at Kev Shear, though, in that double zero. He's working his way up to that front. You can see that second pack. They have lost so much ground. They're, they lost another second. Here we go to the 22. We shall go. Who's going to get held up? Who's going to get by? Oh, man. This is not good here. Look at this. Pritchard's going to get held up. The outside line's going to get by. Inside line is getting held up. Cole and Olsen get by. Brian is holding up some drivers. That's what the second pack needed to see. However, Brian couldn't hold up Batson. Cars are still getting held up. That's what the second pack needed to see. Alex Drain trying to find his way around will do so or not. Now Drain's going to get by. Not enough for that second pack. However, now they got to get around Bryant. Ross has been leading this pack the entire time. Now McCurry wants his turn. Nathan Hudson, Eric Burton now want their turn. Same with RJ Bishop and Sky Commons. Now these drivers got two more cars they're going to catch up to. That's Cody Lamas and John Art. I believe those will be the only cars left because the rest of the pack is in turn three and four, and I don't see how they're going to approach them with that much time. Top four are running away. Real quick, check on the 22. There he is. There's the second pack. I don't think they gained enough time. Like, they have officially lost this pack. Now the 22. McCurry. Gonna get by, though. R.J. Bishop and a couple of drivers are going to get held up here. Kyle Keith, who lost the pack a bit, he's caught up. It is going to get held up here, but he's going to work with Ron Bishop. Hudson swings to the outside line. Sheldon Ross really took the worst end of it there. They will get by, though, with at least somewhat of ease. Sheldon trying to stick with Nathan Hudson and Ember Ross. I don't know how much ground that really gained them. Probably not enough. But regardless, though, yeah, they were, se they were separated by five seconds. Yeah, I just don't see him. That's a not, not enough time. There's no way. These four are getting closer to Cody Lamas and John Art. Shear, Olsen, Gardner, and Cole. Kind of funny, too, when the 500 came. I believe Gardner and uh, and another Ford were working together. I don't remember who, but I don't think it was a teammate. This time, Gardner has a teammate. Gardner came runner-up in the 500. Can he win at Talladega? Now, here they come to Cody Lamas and John Art. Oh, Shear's going low on Lamas. Not on John Art, however. Art's going to hold him up. 
Cole now needs to get low. He's got to go low. He's got to go low now. Now he does. Sheer. Oh, Olsen got put up high by his teammate. Five to go when we cross the line here at Talladega. Sheer leading them down. Olsen now finally gets by. Here comes the main second pack. Pritchard in the eight car. Swings by Cody. And swings by Art. We got players back in the game. Only Pritchard, however. Yeah, that second pack, they have all lost that pack there. Five to go before we cross the line cap. Batson now working on John Art. Michael Walton. Alex Strain's going to get by. Trent Dunham and the one is going to get held up. Sicoli, who's in the rear of the field. Now the main pack will get around. Quinn Moore going to get by. James Qualls trying to work his way by. Oh, no, Moore's going to get held up. Dunham and Qualls are trying to use the high line. They're trying to do what they can to stay in that pack. Now Moore going to swing low. Separated some cars here. I doubt they're going to catch Spillman, Roush, Meyer, Parker, Flickinger, Matthews, Batson, Keith Batson rather, or Zachary Fitzwater as they're approaching JT Bryant. I doubt they're going to approach him. But you never know. Three to go. I just don't think so. And nine times I've ten when I've said that. Things have definitely been for the worse. These guys are now approaching Cody Lamas and John Art. And it's just way too late. I just don't see it happening. Not enough holdup. Moore trying to work with Qualls and Dunham. Sicoli trying to work with Drain. There's still a race in the front. Here comes Keith or uh, Levi McIntyre up in the front. Cap Batson going for third. Cap Batson has been on a race surge ever since she's gotten that top 10. Because now, here she comes trying to battle for a win. I believe, too, if my memory serves me correctly, Keith Batson has not won a cup race at all in his career. This will be the first Batson to win a cup race. Two to go. Here comes Cat to the lead. Bring along Michael Walden and Daniel Olsen in the Fords. And here comes Alex straight into the 14, trying to be a two-time winner. Batson trying to play mirror driving. They are not going to approach JT Bryan and others. Dunham, Qualls, and Moore have lost the pack. Coming to the line will be the white flag Take a play. Look at Sicoli, fourth on that inside line. He is working his way up on the front. He lost the pack because the Poteets blew up, and now is a chance for the win. Here comes Drain. Four wide for the lead. I'm losing my voice and my breath. White flag at the line. Holy cow, what a race are we having here. Four wide. Drain takes the point. Joshua Sicoli. Now Johnny Gardner trying to work his way up to the front. Shears now working with the 12. Sicoli under fire from Gardner. Is he trying to get a slingshot for the move for the lead? Can't make the move. He's got the front straight, though. Last chance for Sicoli. The nation's rent Ford, the Tropic in a Toyota, the Mobile One Ford. Here comes Gardner. That's for second. That's all she wrote. Alex Drayton. Cover the line on the front straight. A winner in Auto Club will be a two-time winner as the rookie. Checker flag. Drayton wins it. What a race. Holy cow. Oh, my. Alex Drayton going to do the unthinkable. Holds off the field and is going to win at Talladega. His second career win is the rookie. And that right there is going to help the wild card slot for sure. Especially because of the fact with how the points were. And I forgot to check the points, which we'll probably take a look at shortly. 
This is really going to help him up because I believe he was in the top 20s at this point. Unbelievable. Alex Drayton, his second career win. I think it just shows why he deserved to be in the Cup Series for sure. Johnny Gardner will be runner-up again in another big SS race. That has got to be a killer for that 12 team. They were runner-up at the Daytona 500, driving the 21. Now runner-up in the EA Sports 500 here at Talladega. Another big SS race and unfortunately will not get the job done. Let's get your top 10 results here. Alex Drayton, second career win. Nabbing the job well done. Johnny Gardner will get second. Joshua Sicoli, I believe, too. He started towards the rear of the field. Came away third. Kev Shearer, great run for that double zero team. That really is going to help him for sure. He was in the bottom of the standing. Same for Brett Pritchard. They'll end up fourth and fifth, respectively. Daniel Olsen will come away sixth. A great finish for him. Looks like the theme race really helps him out there. Seth Cole coming away in seventh. Levi McIntyre eighth. Cap Batson, another top ten for him. Will come away ninth. And Michael Walton completing the top ten. There's the rest of the drivers coming on down to pit road here. I'm going to quickly uh, show the full results here. And we look at our points here. Uh, so when this race was coming on by, just give me a second as this loads here. Because I did have it set up and then it uh, did not happen. So here we go. After it is. Sheldon had the points lead. Trent Dunham was second. So I believe from way how they were shown, separation of seven points, I believe Trent Dunham will be the new points leader coming into Armory. Commons was third. Ferranti was fourth. So Ferranti's really going to take a hit right there. Eric Burt was fifth. Dylan Pozzi was sixth in the points. That's really going to knock him out of the top ten in the points right there. Pritchard actually is uh, seventh in the points. My bad there. I thought he was doing poorly, but he's doing really, really good rather. Eighth is Ember Ross. Ninth is JT Bryant. Anthony McCurry. Completed the top 10, so from looking where we're at, Bryant's going to be out of the top 10. McCurry's going to be out of the top 10. Qualls had a not bad run. Uh, not really. He's probably going to be out of it. Or he's probably going to free fall better. Actually, um, looking at here, there was a three-way tie for a limit between Qualls, Hudson, Sicoli. So Sicoli is probably going to jump up to the top 10 points because of that run. Johnny Gardner will definitely be in the top 10 points. Same for Drayton. And the fun fact, too, about looking at the stakes, if the chase were to start before that race, uh, Hudson and Alex Drain would have been the two wildcard slots, but I know Drain for sure with that win, that's going to really, really get him up there in the top 10 in the points. I believe he will probably be, like, the lower half of the 10. So, looking through there, Seth Cole, he's going to jump up pretty good for sure. Levi McIntyre, the same for him. Connor Meyer, not so much. Charles Sanford, not so much. Daniel Olsen, for sure. There was also a three-way tie between Art Olsen and Osborne. Uh, Keith Batson, not going to have a good points today. Cap Batson, however, really going to get up some points. Shears going to get some points for sure. As you look at the bottom, bottom drivers here, uh, below... R.J. Bishop, you had Phil Parker, so he's not really going to get some points at all. Zach Rogers not going to get some points. Kyle Keith's not going to get some points. Cat Bats definitely going to get some points. That was well needed. Second top 10 of the season. And Audrey Baranowski, her misery is just continuing right there for the 46 team. So that was a look at the points. So, redocumented. So don't forget, too, the All-Star break, the way up as it follows, too, and I'm going to quickly go over here, too. Uh, it's the drivers that are winners from last season after the All-Star Race and drivers that won this season before the All-Star Race and drivers that are top 10 in the points. So the way that who could probably get lucky here, if they were as is, were Sky Commons, Alex Ferranti, uh, Dylan Pote, Brett Pritchard, Amber Ross, Anthony McCurry, and all those drivers. But that'll change for sure after Talladega, so... Going to be interesting to see what will happen, though, with those drivers. Nonetheless, thank you guys for watching. If you liked it, be sure to give it a like, comment your thoughts, subscribe to part of the NRSL Band, that subscribe button. Personally, also want to thank everyone who painted, uh, from Kyle Keefe to Connor Meyer to Johnny Gardner to RJ Bishop. Uh, I believe uh, 
I'm trying to think here out of all the list here. That may have been it, unless there was somebody else. Um, Zach Flickinger, I know he painted uh, his scheme as well. Uh, that is all I could think of, because, uh, you know, everybody else, they, you know, had others had in paint. Because I know Seth did not paint. I know uh, a couple others didn't paint as well. So, other than that, thank you, though, to everyone who painted all those schemes. It means a lot. That was awesome. And I believe out on Discord, it mentioned about next season's theme, which will be 2005. So, pretty crazy how we're jumping from 2001 to 2005 in a matter of like that. So, other than that, thank you guys for watching. If you've been watching through on the on the uh, YouTube and have been watching through the premiere mode. Thank you as well for watching in. What a race. If you like to be sure to like, comment your thoughts, subscribe, part of the NSL button, the subscribe button down below. Hit the bell notification for every time a video gets uploaded. Till then, we will see you guys later for Armory next week. You've been watching production of the Inner Cell where racing is living here on the 8675309858 channel. Till then, we'll see you in Seattle. Here come the points at the end, like always. Until then, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.